All right, welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press, and our analyst, Opunabo Unkoteria, political affairs analyst, joining us from River State, is very much around with us. Good morning to you, Opunabo. Good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. It's good to have you join us, and uh, we're going straight to the papers and hoping that we can make sense of some of the headlines that we are seeing in the papers. We're beginning with the Guardian newspaper this morning, the Guardian newspaper. And uh, the biggest or the boldest uh, headline there is economy, rule of law, foreign policy, security, top agenda for nominees. Uh, that's, that's the, uh, those are the terms of reference, as it were, for uh, the new nominees for ministerial appointments and all that. From the trajectory that has been set by this government, do you see that being achievable in the nearest future? I must be honest with you, because we don't have to have a very good. I must be honest with you. Uh, of course, these are the normal rhetoric. We had the same thing under Buhari. And what did the education minister say to you? Just seven years. A few months into his, uh, the end of his tenure, he said, they brought me to the education ministry, but I must confess I knew nothing about it. And this was a man who was at the end of the education ministry for seven or eight years. Mm. So this is just a normal writer. What else did they discuss? Security, of course. The economy. And what else did they discuss? Would they discuss Biden? Would they discuss uh, King Charles? That's what they were going to discuss, because these are the burning issues. The question is not what you're going to discuss. The question is whether you're going to have square pegs and square holes. Mm -hmm. Whether we are going to ensure that we have the competent people to run. Not what you're going to discuss. What you're going to discuss is known. What else are you going to discuss on the way to are not going to discuss on the way to are not going to discuss the economy. You're going to ask the questions of if you're made uh, education minister, how are you going to turn around the education ministry? If you're a petroleum minister, what are you going to do about it? You are going to do something or not? That kind of process you have. But well, now, you know, now their portfolios are not yet revealed. So being able to make sure <laughs> that uh, no, no, square I'm pegs... Not, the, being yes, able to I'm ensure able, that more square more pegs are put in square holes, I don't know how that can be achieved if the that, portfolios that, that, are not yet defined. That's the conundrum there. And that's why a lot of people are located for uh, the portfolios to be attacked. So that uh, the questions are going to be specific, mm -hmm. and your, your your understanding of what you're expected to do will be as a thing. But unfortunately, no. But again, there's another argument that the, the minister, the president, can always reject. In other words, he can always move it from one ministry to another ministry, even after the appointment. Mm -hmm. That is it. But that, to me, is not a good enough reason not to attack the facilities. At least let us have some confidence that you are getting square pegs and square holes and not square pegs and down. Let us have that confidence. But are they bothered about you? They're not bothered about you. Most of these appointments, just like Sanin said, uh, the president is embracing uh, serpents with no risk of threat. And uh, uh, those who have been with that that was also silly or Sanin said. That, that should be true. All they are after is how to compensate their political economies, how to compensate all those that assisted them in getting into the But I certainly mean, ought not to be there. In fact, that's all they're doing. Because when they talk of being a minister, it's not just your performance as a governor or your performance as a former minister. And if you look at most of the performance, a lot of us have this warped understanding of the economy. If you like, build the whole rules in this world, and if you don't save the human capital, it will be your fail. Okay. Because Talk even if you build the whole road, as far as I'm concerned, the roads are built, you're concentrating on them because you're also going to fed or, or line your own pocket. Why not you back up that? Okay, like well, what, well, let's move from that. This screening, I don't know how many Nigerians are going to really spend time to watch it. Because from I what we're seeing, the grilling that Nigerians would have loved to see on the house of this people on the list may not be. So Nigerians, I, I, I'm not sure that I would take my time to watch it. I wish it, I, I had reasons to. I really wish I had reasons to. 
But from what we've seen over the years, it's just take a bow and go. Mm. And I mean, we have That's how many ex governors That's there? That's another annoying we thing. We have ex members of the house there. Are they going to question these ones and grill them? Take as a bow. They, Take a bow, take a bow. I can tell you, a lot of them, a lot of them, will, a lot of them will have been reached even before now. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talking about human capital development, there is a, a smaller headline here: unemployment concerns as seven firms lose six hundred and twenty-four billion naira to naira depreciation. Open up, but this is a major concern. Yeah. Yeah. This is the this is the concern because uh, talking about the coup, although I've told people we've always had our coups every four four years, covered up with niceties and complexities, we've always had our coup because what is the coup when somebody is imposed on you? That, that that's a coup. So we're talking of uh, loss of jobs and exactly most important the loss of hope. Because what keeps you going is hope. Uh, these are the problems we have in all these the Sahel leaders. They're talking of the contiguous uh, country in Nigeria. And that's why a lot of us have, have this fear. You know, because when you have this school, all over, it becomes irrational. A lot of us have this fear that what is going to happen. You, you, some people say you don't pray for it. Some people tell you the worst uh, democracy is better than the, the best uh, military. I mean, that is stupid. I'm very sorry to say. You can't tell me that. Because I want to use an example. We have um, Gaddafi. That was, a, that was a dictatorship. Mm. We had uh, this man in Iraq. That was a dictatorship. But today they are regretting it. Mm. So don't come and tell me the worst the is better than the best. It's a lie. That's a lie. It, once the government is able to meet the demands and needs of the people, that is good. That's all they need. It's not about the government. It's not about the government. It's not about the name, the nomenclature, rather. It's all about government, not the nomenclature. So look at the, uh, 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 Iraq today. Is this Iraq? Yes. I think Saddam Hussein. That is about People are weeping. Gaddafi, people are crying. Mm -hmm. that in Nigeria, we have we have military, we have democratic so civilian regime, and people are dying. So which one will you prefer? Which will you prefer? So the truth about it is that yes, lots of jobs as a result of these uh, policies that are not people sent, policies that are represented, policies that are meant for the thing. I told you last time I said what we practice is socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor. They are not bothered about the masses. You do your things. And that is why you have the loss of jobs, because they come up with all kinds of anti people policies. No conscience whatsoever. You say, okay, this thing we are doing. What are we going to do? You must have procedural obligations. There are what you call the principle. What's the, if, if we do this, let's test run it. If we do this, what is going to be the outcome? Before you go ahead. These are things we do in civilized class. And you come here to tell me, for example, petrol. Is uh, the Nigeria is, uh, is uh, petrol is least expensive in Nigeria? How can you tell me that? Do you think at all you're telling me petrol is least expensive in Nigeria? Yes, it's expensive in other areas because it is covered up by other things like national health insurance. Covered up by you want to you abroad, you want to buy a car, all you just do is show proof that you're working and you can pay back. Mm. You don't need to stress yourself to get your car. Is that what is happening here? Mm -hmm. Can you afford? To go to you find our health centers are they working to start they are not working. There you just walk in, even if you're dying, you're sure that the nation is going to save that money and you pay gradually. Is that what we're is sustainable yet? So don't make your compare. When you also compare, compare the social welfare. Mm. Also compare social welfare. And not and, just saying petrol, petrol. And we produce the petrol. And now we, what what are what are the problems? Have you addressed the problem? For eight years, you have the Minister for Petroleum mm -hmm. who was Buhari. So when they say a cabal, I get really angry and sad. Because Buhari was also part of the cabal. Why did I say so? You were the one paying, uh, paying the money for turn around and dinner. Who were paying? So you were paying mm -hmm. money to cabal. Mm -hmm. Cabal refused. So you are paying the money. You are only the cabal. Because you are the one paying. You are the Minister for Petroleum. Mm -hmm. You approved the payment. And you, you told us you knew the. It makes him the head of the cabal, as it is. <laughs> yeah, if you are petroleum minister. Yeah. So you are the head of that cabal. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. talking about talking about uh, human capital development and unemployment yeah. and petrol and everything, it brings us to the point where NLC is mobilizing as we speak. Even when the federal government has said that they are banned from strike, that that was the word they used. They are banned from strike because they had a court uh, order that they cannot they cannot strike and all that. But NLC is insisting that on Wednesday they are still going on that strike, murder of all strikes, they as they're say, calling it. What are your it thoughts? It is a right to protest far right. You can't circumscribe my right unnecessarily. Why would it come? But you see, I don't have. My dad was a judge. So most times I find it quite difficult. He was the very first black judge in all the last of the last time. But I find it very sad when I see most of these compromised and corrupt judges. Of course, right now I can say uh, Bukashaw said, Bukashaw also, also mm -hmm. said that his wife was corrupt. Mm -hmm. Whatever he said, that is it. His wife was corrupt. He said he said he left. I said, the mm -hmm. of the court of appeal. Now, the truth about it is that my problem is I don't even trust NLC. I don't trust them. I see the NLC as looking for how to also do I said this is my opportunity. Other, how can you tell me once you embark on this track? You know the shenanigans of the government, the antics of the government. You say you want to embark, embark on this track. They invite you to a meeting. You suspend this track. When already you, you would have gone ahead with the strike. While your strike is on, you're negotiating. That's mm -hmm. the best way to go about it. Because we all know the antics of, of the government. Why they are trying to negotiate? If they employ what you call the stadium policy, they just tie you. While the strike is going on, or while you're negotiating, they go behind. They go to courts. From Christian. That's what they do. We all know that the government can never be sincere. Can never be sincere. So why do you have to decide that? Because you are thinking that they are going to invite you and give you envelopes. I'm very sorry, but that's my conviction. The NLC has failed that you have conflict. I was looking for the NLC of Kokori of those days. Thank mm. God, of Kokori of those days. Those are the kind of ones that, not this bottom bread and bread of NLC. What have we done? Every, look at every day, look at what is going on. Things are getting worse, and the colors of NLC. They are just there to send out their own pocket. That's as simple as that. So I don't believe in NLC. What will save us is a spontaneous reaction. Something mm. that, like the NSAS. Mm. Like the end sacks, that is what is going to save this country, not what is being planned. Because the situation, our situation is assuming apocalyptic dimension. We're already there. We're already there. Just like the uh, passenger said, we're already there. We're sitting on the of gunpowder. Okay, let's move. That is move. the small thing that ignites. If I, even if I light my pipe now, I believe that it might ignite. We're already there. I, I'm sorry for this conversation. Okay, let's move to the I'm next newspaper, Oponabo. Mm -hmm. Let's move to the Punch newspaper. Yeah. And the lead headline on the Punch newspaper, Uncover CBN, NMPCL mess, economists, group tell Tinubu special investigator. Well, the writers there, Tinubu appoints Obaze special investigator, EFCC police others to join probe, Investigators to go after ex-Buhari appointees, private individuals hiding government funds. Punabo Kotaria is still with us. Hello, Punabo. Can you hear us better now? Yes, clearly. Clearly. All right. So let's go back to that headline on the Punch newspaper that we were taking before we went on that strike. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to join NLC to go on strike, right? <laughs> I mistakenly said strike. All right, so uncover CBN, <laughs> uncover CBN, NMPC, LMS, economist group, tell Tinubu special investigator. Uh, Tinubu appoints Obaze special investigator. EFCC police others to join probe. Investigators to go after Buhari appointees private individuals hiding government funds. What's your take on this, Opunabo? Well, uh, I, I, would, I would be very happy, I would be pleased to see that uh, the so-called impunities they want to play will start to, uh, I'm very sure, will start with the certificates and all this stuff, before we go into uh, NLPC and uh, 
<laughs> they dance on the light of it. But it, it's a brilliant idea. I, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm always, I'm always uh, I, 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 I'm in shape with what I would call uh, investigation. If you believe that you're free and you have those calendars in your cover, there's no problem about it. But I, what I hate is witch hunting. And I think that is the problem with the CPM government. The CPM government is one person that has never liked because of his disdain for cut orders and so At the point, he had obeyed himself out on the other hand, as in so much, he was quite used to him. I don't like such characters. But that does not mean that uh, for whatever it is, that anybody should treat him as um, a common criminal, even when the court has not pronounced him one. Otherwise, I'm so happy what is going on with the end of the very friend, very very happy. So that the length that many an office is expansion and that everybody is equal in the eyes of the law. Mm. Now, I've also said that talking about NNPC, I have my sincere doubt because mark my words today. If NNPC is genuinely pro mm. and the white paper is out, the president of the country will be bought because it was with Rwanda and so on. Mm. When we are doing all the turn around maintenance and all this stuff, when we are fleeting our credit to drive, the president was fully involved with Rwanda and other oil business. So I am waiting to see that investigation. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. It does appear that... The CBS own. The, the CBS own is because the policies were anti the president. He said it himself. You remember, he said those policies were uh, against him. He said it. Not that the government said it. So he had that that lost that that issue and the most and eventually he got into power and the first was it came back time. That's the CBM. Although it rubbed up negatively and the CBM without the governor as at that time without the freedom function went on with those policies that he to hell you all can die. Now I think that the basis will go back. I want the rule of law to take its place. But I pray that he will come back. That's my prayer. Because he started to generate the whole problem we are having with all those ill applied policies. Yes, he started. Yeah, then the he... issue of MMPC, I am waiting to see. Where is it? We'll go to jail. Mm. But, but, uh, um, the, um, the, unfortunate the, thing, the unfortunate thing is that. Um, NNPC is not part of the terms of reference as it is. It's only the uh, CBN. So not, this investigator, yes, CBN. his assignment is oh, to investigate okay. the CBN. Oh, okay. that, but that, it is economics. That, 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 it is economics and groups. Yeah. 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 It's economics oh, and groups oh, that, that are saying. They are saying include NNPC. Exactly. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yes. Oh, it's not. Oh, they, they, it's, it's not I was wondering. I, I was wondering. No, not investigate NNPC. But they are the ball. <laughs> Mm. They will not investigate. So I know from a one to turn around and say that to the one Gwari pay Gwari was doing that for Petula, he will go to jail. Because Gwari himself said the fraud, the fraud in the uh, uh, South City was so much that the federal government could not continue. That was what Gwari said. Who was in charge? Who was paying the turn around? That is best that I did that I did. You call this fraud, yes, you see. Who was the minister for Petula? Gwari? So what are we talking about? So why don't you go to jail? And I'm waiting to see that day that he will be imprisoned the second time in time. So that people will learn. So that people will learn. The first one people were not happy because they felt he, he was a man of refugee. Now we've come to see. They said the woman who the border gave it as called the start. That the dear boy was actually the man of refugee. Not Buhari. Not Buhari. They should not bother themselves. Tidibu will not be investigated. He will not because they will trace it back to one do and all this. <laughs> he will not now. We all know. They should leave that one. But so, anything concerning investigation, concerning the water certificate, uh, the petrol, anything, they should just forget it. Oh, well, Kano, all right, let, let's touch a bit on Kano. Uh, Kano returns to DSS uh, custody after checkup by a personal doctor. Uh, we, we, we learned that he was allowed to go see his personal doctor, and then we also learned that he has uh, returned to the custody of the DSS. Uh, does this disappoint you, Opunabo? Are you one of those who believe that the first step in bringing peace to the South is, is to release Namdi Kano or not? No, 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 no. 
You see, the truth is, you don't stampede a government in such manner. Otherwise, you're going to have pockets. Like now, you see people brandishing guns and so Then, What mean, about the court order? To... What about the court that order? That has ordered his the release. Court order. mm -hmm. The court order, I completely agree, but don't forget, can you also jump to bail? And this case is complicated. He but jumped bail. No matter the how complicated it is, shouldn't the court orders be... That's what I'm saying, more. The court are making the bail. You know, they are completely caught on that. That's what we should also understand. And where you have completely caught on that, of course, the first state's government is no doubt about that. Because they are trying their cause of co equal jurisdiction. So, of course, the first should take the, the only court order that should supersede to be a superior court. But that is one. We agree the court has given orders. The, the country, the GSS must obey. I don't know why that video of the justice. I don't know what to still be there. That man ought to be in jail, right? He ought to be in jail. Therefore, right? what he did the last time, he ought to be in jail, right? But we all know what is going on. If you talk of Kano, a man like, uh, if, uh, I, uh, I think, a man like, uh, that's the uh, evil king. Or uh, Hanez uh, uh, Igbo, something like yes, that. Yes, Hanez Igbo. Yeah. Yes, such so persons with um, um, the obu of our nature, if they can hand it over to such persons, because we are actually looking at security situation. If they can hand it over, if, it's, if, you're, if for example, you've been just admitted to jail, the first time, and you jump there, it will be very difficult for anybody to trust you. Yes, we agree it's caught for that, but we're also looking at the security situation. It's very difficult for anybody to trust you. That's why when you keep making those incendiary statements, a lot of the honest. Because you're now, you've now become a national threat. Mm. You're a threat to the nation. That's why if you're not a Muslim, if you're compunctious, yes, people will say, okay, let us see. But if you're not, now they don't like to be very Yes, you're going to argue again that cut order, whatever it is, good or bad, you must agree to cut order. I completely agree with you. That's why I say it's a little bit complicated. I think it's more of the evils, the evil leaders sitting down with the federal government to discuss. Mm. Uh, well, uh, that is the best way to go. So that they can hand them over to either the OBU or Furniture, for example, or to not to start a government, forget the government, or to the, uh, the President General of our new group, I think it's a man here right now, hand them over to such person after reaching certain accommodation. I think that's the best way to resolve it. I think it's more of like mediation than mitigation. Okay. Uh, well, um, so so that we can just wrap up, uh, but, but we we have uh, so sorry, many... Sorry, my, sorry, sorry, my brother. In that way, they have also obeyed the cost for that, because they must have released it. Mm. Now you understand. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so, um, uh, like I said, we have so many things that we could have discussed, but we need to wrap up. But before that, we'd like your comment on what is happening in Niger. ECOWAS has given marching orders to the uh, military junta that has taken over and said that one week after that, they are going to take action. And they have placed so many sanctions on uh, Niger and all that. We also saw this is like a deja vu. We saw it on, on Mali. We saw it on Burkina Faso. We saw it on so many other places that have had this kind of uh, things. Now, we also are afraid that there is a possibility that the Arab Spring or anything might be coming to the West African nations right now. We'd like you to uh, comment on the actions of ECOWAS and the actions of the Presidential Guard in Niger. Toothless bulldog. <laughs> ECOWAS, toothless bulldog. It's a good speaking illusion to think that they will force those military men out. So, you know those kind of characters, those in Nigeria, you know how they do You know, they, they don't care, they are prepared to die. I don't know what's going to Nigeria. They have you been able to contain the ones in Nigeria. But the, they belong to all those Boko Haram and others. What have you done? Have you been able to contain them? Now you want to go to their own country. Let us see, let us see how many of them will go. And they will have support. Once the echo has moved in, of course they have support from other countries. What do we have? We cannot even contain the insurgency in our country. We want to go and do a big brother rubbish. Big brother, empty big brother, big brother without brains and without. What are you going to do? 
who are going to send, even the Nigerian soldiers are going to send there, we just go there and sleep. The ones you send to San Pisa Forest and Co., you do take care of. You've not solved your problem, you're going to look at another person. And would you allow them? If they have a, a president that is uh, draconian, a president that is selfish, egocentric, it's not bothered about, why would they kick him out of the as, as for the They are doing all this so that they will protect themselves. Because they know that they are like that president. And they want to protect themselves. They are not doing it in the interest of democracy, in the interest of the people. They are protecting themselves. Let them go, and I pray they will all be wiped out. Allow them to rule their country. Let them know that they don't want to do that. You come and rule your own. You've not taken care of your house. You're You've not removed the law from here. You've seen the peg in another man's time. That's what they're trying to do. Not because of you. It's to protect themselves. It's not to do democracy. It is to protect themselves because they are all behaving the same way that that man behaved and they kicked him out. And I pray they'll all be kicked out someday. Not the same way. Hope we never. Then you come and tell me the worst, worst Democrat that is better than this. You have a mental problem to tell you that not. Hope we never, Thank you so much for uh -huh. your time. <laughs> it's, it's always explosive <laughs> with you on Up the Press, and we just love you for that. <laughs> thank you for your thank you, thank you. brutal honesty. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Open up on Kotaria joined us from River State and of the press. You're still watching The Breakfast. We'll take a break and come back with our first hot topic. Do stay with us. Grab your cup of coffee or tea because it's getting hotter. <laughs>